Welcome everybody to your second Node.js tutorial. This episode, we're going to talk about how to take what we learned in the previous video, the basic Node.js commands, and put those inside of a script. So we're no longer going to be working in the interactive mode. Instead, we will be working with a JavaScript file. Before we get started, I did want to thank our sponsor, Filestack, which is an uploader that you can easily bring into your projects to upload, transform, and deliver any file into your app with really powerful abilities to allow the user or yourself to transform the image in the app. So if you're interested, check out the link down below. So here we are in the command prompt. I have the interactive Node.js running. To exit out of this, you can do control C twice. And now we are back to our terminal prompt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new JavaScript file using a text editor or IDE. Whichever editor you decide to use, that's fine because the JavaScript code is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to be using the software Ultra Edit, which I'll also have a link down below for. However, there are many other alternatives, for example, Visual Studio Code, which many of you will be using as well. Whatever it may be, we can just say file, new, and this will give us a new file. And we will say console.log, and inside of quotes, Hello world. Now this is very tiny, so you can hold control and scroll in with your mouse. I'm just using the trackpad on my laptop and that works just fine. This software is also available on Mac for those of you who are interested. So last thing, we just wanna save this as a JavaScript file. So file save, and we can put this anywhere such as in documents. We're going to end up making a project later, so don't worry about location too much right now. This is just an example. So let's go ahead and just call this app.js and save. This will give us some basic syntax highlighting. The layout is pretty customizable, so if yours doesn't look exactly the same, you can tinker with view. For example, we have this document preview over here, which will display an overview of the page. So I could turn that off if I wanted with view, view slash list, and then document map, and that will disable that. Easiest way to run this is just open a prompt, either PowerShell or the command prompt. And then we'll just change directory over to wherever this is located, which is in documents. And then from here, we can just say node and then app.js. And we should see a response here. Hello world. Now that we have a basic setup to execute our node script, let's go ahead and make a little bit more complicated of a script here. I'm going to be going off of some of the getting started guide code. So you can reference that if needed. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a very basic web server to allow us to get some data to show up in the browser. So to do this, we are going to say const HTTP require and inside of parentheses, we will say HTTP. Next, we can use this that we imported to create a server. So we'll say const server and this is going to be assigned HTTP dot create server and don't worry if you know you're brand new to node and you don't have all this stuff like memorized like i didn't have this memorized i had to refer to that page so it's no big deal the main thing is just becoming familiar with the different patterns of doing things and some of the different commands so what we're doing in both of these lines is creating a constant kind of like a variable but you can't later change the value that's what this const means you could also see let or on occasion you might see var which is the older way of doing things and is not recommended. So we recommend using const or let. We'll go with const. Now this create server is going to require some data to be passed in and you pass in data inside of these parentheses. It's known as an argument. So we're going to pass it an argument is the way you would say it. Now the type of argument that it expects is actually a function or some section of code that is executed. Lots of new concepts here, especially if you're new to JavaScript, but we have the ability to pass in a function that will be executed. A function is just a section of code and we'll be using that word a lot through this series. Now we can define a function in line here with a set of parentheses, an equal sign followed by a greater than sign, so an arrow, and then curly braces. In this first set of parentheses, we will define two variables also known as parameters here, which will be the request and the response, which will have extra information about the request being made. And we can describe what we want to respond to using this res parameter. 
So if you think about a website, the user is going to make a request to that website and then the web server is going to be like, hmm, somebody's reaching out to me, what should we do? Let me take a look at that request, see what they're asking for, and then I can respond to that, either sending them an HTML page or some JSON data for an API or whatever it might be. So that's what the request and the response parameters to find here are. So make sure your code looks exactly like this so far. You should have, you know, two parentheses here, a single parentheses here, an open curly brace, and then down here we'll have the closed curly brace and the final closed parentheses followed by a semicolon. This structure will become much more familiar, so don't get too lost in it right now. Don't overthink it. Just make sure it's typed out exactly as is. Now we can start describing that response, so we can say res.statuscode and set that equal to something like 200, which means everything went okay. And then res.setheader. And this is just uh, to describe what kind of information we are giving back. So you'll say content type inside of quotes, and then the content type we'll be using will be text slash plain. And then lastly, we will say res dot end. And this is where we are going to actually say what the user gets back. So let's go ahead and say, hello world. We are almost done. After we define that server, we will just say server dot listen. This is going to take a port. We will use 3000 and then the URL path or the host name, we will say 127.0.0.1. And then the final argument passed in here is going to be a function, which will show up in the console when this server starts. So let's define a function using parentheses, arrow, curly brace. Open those curly braces, and inside of here, we can say console log, and inside of quotes, server running like so. All right, so save all this. You'll need to make sure you save before any time you run your code. And now it says server running. From a browser, you should now be able to visit 127.0.0.1 colon 3000. And this should show up as hello world, which is exactly what we had it send as a response. You could also instead use localhost 3000. These refer to the same thing. Now that was a lot of information, but easily copy and pasteable from the nodejs.org website. And this is just a basic way to set up a server. Now you could easily fill this in with different HTML. So for example, I could throw in here an h1 and then close the h1. Inside of here, I could say, welcome to my page, save this. And over in PowerShell or the terminal, we will close out of our running server with control C and then re-execute this server running. And now when we go and refresh our page, okay, that did not work. The reason this didn't work is because we actually have to change this to text slash HTML. And same idea, we have to save, restart the server. And I'm gonna teach you how to make this faster and more effective in the upcoming episodes. Now I'll give the page a quick refresh and this is actually rendered as HTML. So that is how you could start building an HTML page and have the ability to do backend processing in Node. So that was a lot of information, I'm sure, especially if you're new, but don't hesitate. That was basically just showing how we can build out a server and get a script running. Now we're going to basically go back to the beginning and start building this up again, but this time using a Node.js project. So this will allow us to install dependencies and have a more structure to our application versus just doing everything inside of a single Node.js script. With this, we'll also talk about version control with Git, as well as environment variables and all of the Node.js things that you should be familiar with. So stay tuned for the next video and hopefully this was helpful. Peace out.